So recently I made a video critiquing the fans of the streamer and political commentator Vouch and how they couldn't defend their definition of what a woman is. I had some opinions on Vouch's critique of a debate between one of his followers and the conservative commentator Ben Shapiro, and Vouch's fans had a little bit of a problem with what I had to say about him. And their responses are golden. The cringe is off the charts. The issue at hand is the definition of womanhood, so let's take a quick review of the source material which started this whole conversation off in the first place. Hello, Ben. Uh, there was a time where the word mother exclusively described a woman in relation to her biological offspring, but our definition has since shifted to account for adoption, leaving us with a more social and less biological outlook on motherhood. My question for you is how affirming transgender identity is such a threat to biology when we have clear precedent for similar shifts in language? Now I said this question was problematic because it contained a false equivalency. A man cutting his balls off isn't the same as a woman taking care of a child. It's simply not the same thing. Seems pretty simple, right? But Vouch's fans just weren't able to process this point. So let's review and break down some of their seething butthurt about what I had to say on this matter. So this commenter, David13 Ushi, says, Did your mom... <laughs> Did your mom... <laughs> what? <laughs> Did your mom... What? What? I can't even believe this. Who the f*** starts a conversation like that? I just sat down. What a way to start a comment. This man was really watching my video, typing away, thinking to himself, oh yeah, this is the right way to start a comment. This will really stump him. This will really give him something to think about. He won't know what to say to this. This is how I prove my point. This is how I open. <laughs> oh man. Oh, you, these people are from Mars. Like, they can't think straight. There's something wrong with them. Because I'd really like to know what having a vagina has to do with being a mother. I've never seen my mom's vagina, don't want to, was never pertinent in her raising of me. For all I know, she has a penis, no clue, not going to ask, don't care. Do you hear that everyone? David wouldn't know whether or not his mom was actually transgender unless she was dangling her balls right in front of his face, saying, hey son, give my balls a lick, give them a lick for mommy. David would have no idea as to whether or not his mom were actually a biological woman. Do you see the sort of idiocy that these people live in, the total obscurantism? Not only is there the complete lack of self-awareness with the opener of this comment, but also the idea that you can't tell if a person is trans unless you actually see their genitals. Like, there's, there's no other tells about what a person's true biological sex is. You have to see their private parts to know. It's ridiculous. It's absurd. This person has clearly never interacted with transgender individuals because they don't pass. It is obvious. It is so obvious whether or not a person is a biological male or female. This person has had their mind melted. Their brains have been melted down to believe this nonsense. Next, do all men have the same life experiences? No, even though they all presumably have penises, then why do you assume every woman has the same life experiences? Hell, they don't even have similar experiences once you throw economics, race, and sexual orientation into the mix. People are individuals. Men do not have the same experience. We don't have similar experiences. We are unique. Somewhere there is a dude that got his uh, meat and potatoes blown off in Iraq. Are you going to tell him he's no longer a man because his meat and potatoes were blown off? If we blow off your meat and potatoes, would you suddenly be a woman? No. Well, then your position is irrelevant. This honestly has to be one of the dumbest arguments I've ever seen. Everyone is unique, so therefore a man who surgically inverts his penis and cuts his balls off is a woman, according to David. Next, mental illness. Doesn't matter. Are you really telling me that someone hating their body so much that they want to become the other sex isn't a mental illness, isn't a relevant factor in, this tra in the condition that is transgenderism? Is that seriously what you want me to believe, David? Like, these people have no brains. 
Some men have penises and mental illness. Doesn't prevent them from being men. They're unique. Some women have vaginas and mental illness. Doesn't prevent them from being women. Honestly, there is debate over whether gender dysphoria is even a thing. There's no debate over whether or not gender dysphoria is, is, a, is a thing. It's an identifiable condition where a person wants to mutilate their body in an attempt to be like the opposite sex. This guy is not interacting with reality whatsoever. There's people that would become furry animal people in a heartbeat if the technology existed today. Because people are unique and weird and you don't get to write any of them off because it doesn't meet your criteria. You're not king. You're nobody. This guy has to be one of the most derelict commenters I've ever seen comment on my channel. You can't tell me what to do. You can't write anyone else off. You're not king. Do you have daddy issues, David? I'm assuming you have mommy issues because the way you began this comment is just really twisted. But do you have daddy issues? Do you have problems with authority? The onus is on you to demonstrate to me why I should treat someone who says they want to be a furry animal person like a furry animal person. Because that's not even a thing you can be. There's something wrong with you if you want to be that. And similarly, there's something wrong with you if you are a biological man and you want to be a biological woman. Because that's not something you can actually be. You can only ever be a biological man with his genitals mutilated. But David's antics in my comment section don't stop here. Another commenter says, as someone who lives in New York City and sees a lot of these people, I have never met a single one out of thousands who have passed. I will concede, however, that when people use those pictures of Southeast Asians, I have been bamboozled before, although I think that this is due to Southeast Asian men being a lot less masculine looking in general. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. Cute. But I'm Everyone. not a lady. You're not a lady? Yes. What are you? I'm lady boy. Um, and you don't believe me? You are not a lady boy, are you? I'm no. lady boy. Really? Yes. You are gorgeous. No. Well, that is true. They may be better at passing, but you can still tell this is a biological male from the Adam's apple the voice, the hands, and also, I mean, this is a TikTok, so it's kind of fast and a little hard to tell, but the proportions of the waist to hip ratio. And you know, there is some confusion on your part because to be fair, it is another race of people who maybe you don't have a whole lot of experience with, but once you are acclimated and you know you are familiar with what a Thai man looks like, you will be familiar with what a Thai woman looks like. And then, comparatively, you will know when a Thai biological man is trying to impersonate a woman. You will know what a ladyboy looks like once you are familiar with what a Thai man and a Thai woman looks like. But what does David I Have to See My Mom's Balls 13 have to say about this? If they did pass, how would you know? Selection bias much? No, David, there are not potentially passable transgender people around us at all times. I should not have to pull down a woman's pants every time I meet her to tell whether or not she is actually a biological male. There are more features than just someone's genitals that give you a clue as to whether or not they are a biological male. The original commenter responds, you know, that's a fair point. It's not. It makes me shudder though because those things are everywhere. So the idea that there are even more of them but that they aren't noticed wild. So the prospect that there could be a lot of these people who are actually passable is horrifying to this person. But how does David take this perspective? Dude, why do you care? Honestly, I don't spend all my time wondering what's in a person's pants. Why do you? First of all, David, he doesn't. That's just something you're making up in your head. And what bothers him is the idea that he could be taking a girl home from a club one night and right before they're about to get intimate, when he pulls her pants down, he could be greeted with a man's meat and potatoes or a blown out hot pocket instead of a real vagina. Because of course this person is erroneously calling themselves a woman and trying to pass themselves off as a biological woman. When he wants a real biological woman, not a biological man with mutilated genitals. 
The leftist owl came back and said, this is my last point since you are incapable of substantively pushing against my ideas and I believe it'll showcase the biggest flaw with your prescriptivism when it comes to definitions. Would you say male seahorses are the mother of their offspring? First of all, I'll say the reason this person thinks I didn't substantively push back against their ideas is because he's been primed to only accept certain argument forms, which is why he just keeps restating false equivalencies. Instead of actually engaging with anything I said, and I had a line-by-line -line refutation in my last video, he just asks another question. So first of all, a seahorse pregnancy is nothing like a mammalian pregnancy. And in fact, the word pregnancy to describe what's going on here with a male seahorse is really kind of erroneous and a misnomer. Even in non-mammals like snakes or sharks, pregnancy involves a uterus. So the seahorse eggs are not gestating in the male seahorse like a child in a woman. This is closer to a penguin sitting on eggs than it is to a child growing in a woman's womb. And what makes this even more redundant is like, like do you even know what makes a male seahorse male? It has sperm which fertilizes the eggs. Its maleness is still contingent on a biological function. And then another commenter pointed out something that was very obviously wrong with this argument, asking are male seahorses mammals and or humans? And the leftist owl says, okay, let's say a human male gives birth to offspring. Is he their mother? Yep, and if I had wheels, I'd be a wagon. <laughs> this is just so ridiculous. Like, your hypothetical has to have some sort of bearing on reality to be useful in demonstrating your point. A biological male will never have a functioning uterus. In the most extreme example, you could have a man with an intersex condition where, uh, say, his, his sex organs are formed improperly, but they never actually work, which is why he's still male. But again, back to the real issue at hand here. Why are Vouch fans illogical? Why is this man's mind a factory of false equivalencies, and faulty arguments. The argument that they've bought into here is really a false equivalency and also kind of begging the question because in their mind the only possible answer is yes because the conclusion is already assumed. They're asking this question while taking it as a given that woman is a social role that can be adequately fulfilled by a man with gender dysphoria. But that's just one of two ways this line of thinking is circular. The other is that when you actually ask them to define what a woman is, they say, oh, it's just the condition of womanhood. And then when you say, oh, well, that's a circular definition that's not useful here, they just resort to some excuse making and say, oh, well, the dictionary uses circular definitions for other words, so it's fine here. The thing is that this is again a false equivalency because as this other commenter astutely pointed out, what connects the concept of a woman between time and culture is obviously biological sex. Biological sex is the material basis for gender. Even the original uh, Marxist feminist theorists like Shalamath Firestone would be in agreement with me on this because they theorized that uh, gender roles emerged as expressions of the collective interests of men and women, which are obviously different from each other based on a biological reality. And then, of course, the Vouch fan will bring up a third sex in yet another false equivalency. And this commenter responding to the Vouch fan already beat me to it, but that's precisely the point. This is a third sex. These people in their respective societies, where, whether it's India or Thailand, are not actually considered women because they're not. Socially, they are incapable of fulfilling that role because they're biological men. And if you've talked to anyone who's been to one of these societies, they will tell you behaviorally these people are different from biological women. Both the hardware and the software is different, so they fulfill a different social role. People treat them differently. They may behave in ways that are more feminine or flamboyant than regular men, but they still are dissimilar from women enough that you know it, it, it wouldn't make sense to call them women because, again, they're just not women. So lastly, this person says, this is why trans women should be considered women. The genders aren't specifically locked to sex, so where we draw the line is up to us. There is no reason to say trans women aren't women because it is completely a matter of identity and not biology. It seems you agree that gender isn't locked specifically to sex, and it isn't harming truth because most trans women understand and are open that they are biologically different. I would fully agree with you if they were identifying as the female sex. The thing is, firstly, it's not completely a matter of identity because they're identifying with biology that's not theirs. That's why they get sex reassignment surgery. That's why they 
you know, augment their secondary sex characteristics. And when you say to them, oh, you're a woman, trans women are women, you're not saying this because you're going, oh, well, you fulfill the social role of woman successfully. No, you're telling them this because they want to be biological women and you're entertaining this escapist fantasy they have in their heads, just going, oh, well, I'll pretend with you. I'll placate you so you'll feel better. And furthermore, I just saw a video of a cis woman saying the periods trans women get are fundamentally different than the periods cis women get because it's from medicine we chose to take, as if that medicine isn't the same shit that gives you your period. Oh my god, and then she's just like, you can't get a period without a uterus. No, you can't menstruate without a uterus. Period is a, coll a collection of symptoms that trans women get from the same stuff that you have. Yeah, we have to take it, but it's the same stuff. No, it's a little used, but this thing, when it's full, that's four months of periods. And this little guy. Where are your four months of periods? Oh, I have to wait four months to see them? You can see mine right here. See, this is how we know that, like, transphobes, turfs, people who don't listen to trans people when they say their life experiences aren't feminists. Because a feminist would see these things and find a way to bring us together as women. You just want to draw lines in the sand. Oh my god. <laughs> Do they know that? Because it really seems like a lot of them think that their bodies can perform the exact same functions as biological women just because they've taken some hormones. And this is the other thing too, they always use these weasel words. Suddenly a period is a collection of symptoms. Just like according to you, being a woman is just having feminine traits associated with the historical concept of womanhood. Period to them is no longer defined by discarding the uterine lining, redefining woman and recontextualizing this conversation as an issue purely of identity is the doorway into nonsense and insanity. Really what this goes to show you is that they are illogical because they've bought into this sophistry. This is basically a debate tactic masquerading as a fact. It has no bearing on reality. The thing is, their attempt to prove that our understanding of womanhood is insufficient because, according to them, there are too many exceptions and other situations where the definition breaks down will never work because you can't come up with a new understanding of what a woman is that is more stable, coherent, and descriptively accurate than biological female. And the fact of the matter is, the group of people who they want us to treat and perceive like biological women are really the furthest thing from it. The fact that the consequences of treating trans women as biological women are different from calling an adoptive mother a mother is proof that this comparison is bad. It's proof you're equating two things that aren't actually alike. Saying trans women are women is so obviously an ideological position, but they just emotionally shut down when you point this out to them. And the thing is, when pressed, they'll even admit they're not motivated by the truth. The leftist owl says, my definition of woman is not based on common consensus. It is based on the only logical way of describing what a woman is without doing harm or excluding groups for an arbitrary set of criteria. Because gender is largely an internal identity process, I think it is more useful and less harmful to describe women as those who identify as women. Whether they're treated as women by society is irrelevant to my definition. The whole line of argumentation put forward here is to get you to accept a self-ID model of gender without actually explicitly saying it. The leftist owl has no problem completely disregarding physical reality and using the word woman in a way that he probably knows deep down is wrong because it's all about reaching a certain social goal. He believes this is the best way to help transgender people. This is about not making them feel excluded. Because, as Elias already demonstrated earlier, the criteria are not arbitrary. And of course, the leftist owl also has to pile on because his, his mind is broken, basically. His mind is shattered. He says, also, if we are going by common consensus when it comes to definitions, should we hold elections on what definitions mean? Should we constantly have polls on what definitions people feel comfortable using? This appeal to consensus seems absurd on its face. An appeal to consensus is relevant here because language is a socially constructed thing. There's no inherent deductive meaning to the sounds of words. This meaning is ascribed by people collectively. 
So the only thing that could really overrule and appeal to consensus here is that there's some sort of greater utility in understanding a word a different way, which again, you haven't demonstrated. The thing is, when I see or interact with these people, I don't think this is just like a biological woman. I'd be lying if I said that. That would be a lie. They do not look or act like I expect a woman to. When I see the warmth that a woman has for her adopted child, I can say, yeah, you know, that's your mom. She loves you like you came out of her and you were meant to know each other in this life. When I see a so-called transgender woman, I see a biological man who has mutilated his body chopped off his balls and is doing an impression of a biological woman. That, to me, is not a woman. It's a man who has been led down a dark path by people who were supposed to be his friends, who has been brutalized by the medical industry and turned into a permanent patient. Wessex Explorer correctly pointed out, please note the point of not answering the question, what is a woman, is deliberate. They want the word to be meaningless. They also want to be able to call men women. Women have more rights than men. And mommy issues David shows up again and says, no, the point is that you latch onto some BS essentialism and never let go and scream circular argument over and over again. Here, I'll define a woman for you. A woman is a person who identifies as a woman and makes an effort to be acknowledged as such. There you go. Now, if you want to ask, what does being a woman mean? Then we can go down that cultural construction rabbit hole. But it's not about women having more rights than men. Please provide an enumeration of all the rights an individual has before you let your brain crap out such words on the internet. And Wessex Explorer responds because these people are both making the same point, basically. Do you mean traditional gender roles? So would masculine women really be men? And then another commenter made an interesting point. I guess his name is Marco. He said he'd have to agree with that, but that'd require consistency of thought. So the answer would be no, because they don't identify with that. Thus, back to square one. There's no point trying to get them to nail down any consistent principle, because they just flip back and forth between two essentially contradictory statements. One, a gender is defined exclusively by societal perception and socially constructed conventions and performative behaviors. And two, You're the only one in charge of deciding what your gender is without any reference to external perceptions, and there's no external frame of reference that you have to adhere to in order to claim a certain identity for yourself. So they're saying that gender is at the same time exclusively constructed in societal conventions and interactions, and also exclusively an internal phenomenon, which is unquestionable. Clearly, it makes no sense at all. And that's why you end up with people clinging to dear life to an arbitrary and circular definition, which is really not a definition at all. Because definitions by their own nature exclude what the subject is from what it is not, and excluding here is mean and phobic, so it's better to have words that mean literally nothing. All right, so now lastly, I got this one very, very, very long comment to respond to. This man typed me up a novel, and you know what, gosh darn it if he didn't try. You know, he's obviously trying to reach out and connect with me on this issue. So let's try it. Let's try to do this and engage in some constructive dialogue as so infrequently happens on this site. This one strikes me as not being bad faith. So let's just dive right in. Kintupa says, hey man, not really a huge Vouch fan, but I'll respond to some of what you said in order to get past some of the less substantial critiques levied against you in this. Keep in mind, I didn't watch your original video and I'm coming into it with less context and that I'm responding to each point as I hear it in the video. 220. It isn't really an apples to oranges comparison. The analogy comes down to the ambiguity of biological function and societal categorization, so the role of motherhood is ascribed to two different avenues, biological relation and performing the function of motherhood. He's going to walk this statement back when he hears the rest of my argument later in this comment, but I will restate my position for clarity. An adoptive mother is closer to a biological mother than a biological man with gender dysphoria is to a biological woman. A woman can fulfill the role of mother to a child that's not biologically hers in a way that a biological male can never adequately fulfill the role of a biological female. He continues saying, We still recognize women that adopt a child as a mother in spite of the biological disconnect. Similarly, the Vouch fan is arguing we could recognize cis women and trans women in this way, acknowledging the biological underpinnings while accepting that the role of the person in a social sense falls into the category of woman. 
The advice not to give a definition of woman is more so based on the inherent subjectivity of definitions than it is based on substantiation behind the definitions. No, no it's not. Definitions should reflect reality and our definition does this. Saying a woman is an adult human female will always be more descriptively accurate and have more utility than saying a woman is someone who exhibits the qualities of womanness. Your social constructivist way of redefining woman is really just to create wiggle room to lump together fundamentally dissimilar things to meet a political goal. See, period is just a collection of symptoms. You can't get a period without a uterus. No, you can't menstruate without a uterus. Period is a, coll a collection of symptoms that trans women get from the same stuff that you have. Vouch's advice was more so on the rhetorical realm than it was with the ability to give a coherent definition. The fan, as he pointed out, gave a fair definition of what, of what woman is, of which Ben Shapiro talked past, suggesting it was circular when it functioned fairly similar to other definitions we use in daily life, such as tree or castle. I'm not even sure that your average person would give a circular definition of tree or castle. Another person already made this argument earlier in the video. For some words, it's basically fine if the definition your average person gives is circular, because a woman is not an abstraction in the way that grace or elegance are abstractions. It's a strategic choice for this to be utilized by Ben and his colleagues in order to give more ambiguity to the argument for what defines a woman, which is fundamentally subjective and characterized generally, not really definitively. It's a more philosophical problem and shouldn't really matter as to whether someone should recognize what another person's identity is and boils down to the conversation to subjective interpretations of reality, which isn't as important as how to go about daily living, respecting pronouns, access to healthcare as a trans person, what rights you're due as a trans or cis person, etc. It doesn't get to the core of what really matters in these debates that I think both parties are looking to address, which is the high self-deletion rate and mental health problems in trans people. All right, we can agree on that. The real issue here is these people's lives, their quality of life. But I will remind you that it is your camp that put forward this ridiculous linguistic argument. You guys are the ones saying, according to the rules of language, it should be fine for men to cut their balls off. That is not an argument form made by someone who has a solid case. 420, blaze up. For the future, this is more of an analysis and content critique. I'd try not to get held up by the small details in arguments such as this one. A small response that says it's not really a huge assumption for people to assume you're the biological mother instead of the adopted mother could be okay. All right, so earlier I said most people assume someone's a biological mother when you use the word mother, and this other guy acted like that was a huge shaky leap for me to make when it was entirely an obvious and uncontroversial statement. This entire line of argumentation is, again, a debate tactic and not an actual fact. Buying into these false equivalencies causes you to get sucked into a dream world where you literally don't know your own nose is on your face. Look at this other person. I don't have enough authority to know what a woman is. I'd have to ask someone. You throw away your ability to think for yourself. This is, this is just unconditional deferral to the experts for all critical thought. It only takes one bum variable to bust your whole proof, and leftists have like three at least, false equivalents, red herring, and straw man, and your average Vouch fan is like five times worse than your average leftist. This guy has made his mind an empty vessel for whatever some social constructivist wants to fill it with. See, there's really two kinds of people who buy into this stuff. Emotionalist activists who just had a meltdown when they watched my video, and people with zero perspective who think asking me whether or not I was abused as a kid is a great way to win an argument. This is the sort of person who thinks you literally need to pull down someone's pants to know what sex they are. There is something very obviously and seriously wrong with the way these people think. Their faculties of reason are broken. And it's evident in even the smallest statements they make about how the world works. And this is far bigger than a simple difference in values. You know, I have these values, you have those values, we don't agree at all, but we can agree to disagree. This is a, a total denial, you know, a total refusal to interact honestly with the real world. And this refusal was exemplified by that comment by the leftist owl and was exemplified by these other comments. People need to understand how broken the minds of Vouch fans are. Also, based on this Blair White comment, you clearly have a very superficial understanding of what a woman acts like. 
And it only seems this way because of uh, tons of carefully applied makeup and vocal training. This is the elite of elite of men who do this. And also, women aren't understood to have male genitals, which Blair still has. Very feminine, but will ultimately not make the same decisions or choices or be pursued by men in the same way that men would pursue a biological woman. The allure and appeal of a transgender person is different. As an example, you have the internet personality and makeup YouTuber Nikita Dragon using a urinal in an obviously male bathroom. This goes back to Marco's point, which is that you're flip-flopping between a socially constructed thing and a heavily internal process. Because your camp views these things as entirely separable and roles are culturally constructed and hence malleable, like putty or plastic, thus some of you say there are a million zillion genders. 8.30, the point that cis women have an identity that's not founded on being a woman and trans women do isn't a very well articulated point in my opinion and sort of misunderstands the identities of both cis and trans women. Cis women do indeed make being a woman part of their identity, though it might not be a huge cornerstone, it's an integral part of their identity. For example, you and I are both cis men, but if we were to be referred to as cis women, there's a fundamental distaste or invalidation that we would feel for being called that. It's why being called a woman as a man is used as an insult in masculine dominant places like the military. Similarly, the exact same thing applies to trans people. Trans people don't have their gender identity as the fundamental cornerstone of their identity, just as you and I don't. They also have interests, political beliefs, hobbies, feelings, emotions, etc. that are also fundamental to their identity. Their gender identity, unlike mine and yours, does not align with their given identity at birth, so they seek transition to align, uh, to more align with how they want to be seen, just as cis people use certain signifiers like wearing certain clothes or using certain tones in your voice or using certain language to perform being their gender identity to others. It's like marriage in a way. You and your partner's interest in each other is deeply personal, but you seek to establish your relationship as being significant to others by getting married. I disagree, and you've misunderstood my point here. The cornerstone of a woman's identity isn't this massive insecurity that causes her to have fatal self-harm ideation. That alone alters how a person behaves and operates in society. This is comparable to body integrity dysmorphia. If I woke up every day wanting to cut my arm off and feeling a massive amount of distress because I couldn't do this, yeah, that would kind of be a big thing. Because again, to have this condition, you have to be so racked with self-doubt and self-loathing that you want to chop your own balls off. Your perfectly functioning sex organs, you want to get rid of them. And then sometimes they feel the end result of their transition is not whatever they hoped or wanted it to be. This is a huge problem which impairs their behavior and affects their ability to function in society as a group. That's what you say justifies the surgery. You're really understating it here in an attempt to normalize this, but this very distressing dissonance between what they feel their biological sex should be and what it actually is, is at the core of who they are, and that makes them fundamentally very different than you and I. We don't wake up in the morning wanting to hurt ourselves because we're not women. 850, the rest of these concerns seem more logistical than they do inherent to performing as that gender or more so the validity of that gender identity. The rapid fire of information is a bit overwhelming as a content critique, but overall I'd rather sit down and discuss each one of these more scientific aspects to the conversation than respond to each one here. I'd rather keep it a bit more focused. But if you'd like to discuss each one of these, such as the rates of fatal self-injury after transitioning, I'd be willing to, but I don't think it really matters to the argument of trans validity anyways, since before transitioning, trans people commit a high rate of uh, fatal self-injury as it is. The one aspect that I do see a bit more weight to is having the experience of growing up being recognized as a cis man if they're a trans woman being integral to gender identity. I don't think this really is how gender identity works though, since your experience with gender is heavily internal, and I don't necessarily see it as invalidating that you don't grow up being recognized as a girl if you're a trans woman. It says more about our failings as a society of recognizing this aspect of their identity than it does what their identity is. If I wear fairly jock clothing or look 
or act as a jock, I'll be perceived as a jock more than likely, but that doesn't mean that I will actually enjoy sports or I don't have nerdy interests. Don't judge a book by its cover sort of thing. I'll just tell you right now why their rates of self-deletion, so to speak, I have to mince my words because it's YouTube, uh, are so high. It's because of the thought process that goes into being trans. It's not because of outside persecution, as some people like to suggest. It's because fundamentally, you have a person who is so miserable that they feel they have no way out of this misery other than to remove functioning sex organs. This is someone who looks in the mirror and thinks to themselves, I have no way of being happy in my life other than to self-harm. And you want to know what thought process is a kissing cousin to that? I have no way out of the pain that I'm in except to fatally injure myself. In both situations, we're talking about intense feelings of hopelessness. And the reason people in your camp justify fast-tracking minors to get these surgeries is because they say that if they don't receive them, they will fatally self-injure. It is very easy to switch from one thought process to the other. These people are incredibly fragile and at the end of their rope. But if you want to have a conversation with me about this, you are perfectly welcome to hop in my Discord. And I'll give you a little heads up. You really have two options in responding to me. You can make the case that this is a noble lie, and I should just lie to trans people in order to make them feel better, or you can make a false equivalency and pretend there's this pervasive ambiguity in human sex, which just isn't there. You know, pretending that your average person is closer to being a genderless amoeba than they actually are. You're more philosophically inclined than the other Vouch fans and overthink things, but I think you're not entirely beyond hope. But man to man, really, if you do watch this, I gotta ask you, when has cutting your balls off ever seemed like a solution to your problems? Honestly. Like, whenever someone has a problem and they come to you, if they do, you're like, yeah, cutting off your testicles is the way to solve this issue. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and Red Channels will catch you in the next one.